Peter's Rectory on this, the second Sunday of Easter, for our live stream service this morning. We commence our time together this morning by singing Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord.
eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt. May we who have not seen have faith and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, you, Lord Jesus Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of our lips and the meditations of our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, here we are at the second Sunday of Easter, and it's around this time of the year that we encounter some of my favourite stories from the Gospels. These are powerful stories. They, are, they go to the very core of our existence as human beings and of us as the Church. This story that we have heard from John's Gospel today contains so much. I'm going to focus as we think a little bit about this passage today, mainly on the first part. Not that I want to uh, cut Thomas out, even though in our current COVID-19 environment, Thomas might be seen as the naughty one who didn't stay at home and went out and left the others. Even still, we talk about Thomas a lot and there'll be plenty of time next year for us to think more about him. Rather, I want to think for a moment and speak with you about this first part of the passage. It's a glorious story, this gifting of the Holy Spirit and this commission to go out. The disciples were virtually paralysed by fear. They were disoriented. They did not know what was going on. They had locked themselves in this place and in a sense they had locked up their hearts and their minds as well. There were so many emotions flying around at this time, I'm sure. So many things bubbling up within them. The shame of having deserted this one who they said they would be with until the end. The shame of that night in the garden when Jesus was betrayed and they simply drifted back into the shadows. But here they are in the reality of this moment with all these emotions bubbling up within them and enter Jesus. He finds them. 
he comes to them. And it's significant that he comes and he seeks to open up their hearts and their minds and remind them of who they are and what their job from this point on is going to be. He breathes on them, having given them the gift of peace. He reassures them twice, peace be with you, live in the peace of God which is already yours, which is already and always here. Be certain, be sure of this peace. He breathes on them. He gives them that gift of the Holy Spirit and then he tells them to go forth into the world. Bishop Tom Wright, in his commentary on John's Gospel, reminds us of understanding the difference between achievement and implementation. There was often perplexity among those who first heard the stories of Jesus from these earliest disciples. People were confused that they weren't simply going about saying what Jesus had said and almost repeating or trying to uh, copy what Jesus had done, but rather they told stories about Jesus, they spoke about Jesus and the difference that he had made. You see, they didn't need to repeat it because what Jesus had achieved had been achieved once and for all on the cross. Salvation and reconciliation was made possible on that Good Friday as Jesus died. Salvation and reconciliation was the achievement of Jesus. It was now up to the disciples to go out and to implement that which Jesus had achieved. Tom Wright goes on to speak about the difference between achievement and implementation. He uses the example of a composer who achieves the act of writing a piece of music. It then is left to the musician to implement that achievement in the playing of the piece. And that became true for the disciples as well. And it becomes true for us as his disciples today. We don't have to go around trying to copy what Jesus did, what Jesus achieved. Our task is simply to be part of the implementation. Implementation for us is sometimes a little bit difficult to understand. What is the best way to go around about this? What is the best way for us to be in the world the living presence of Jesus Christ? Well, we understand in some sense that implementation means the way that we behave towards each other, the way that we live in communion with each other. Jesus goes on to make, to the, make the point to his disciples, those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Those whose sins you retain, they are retained. He reminds the disciples in the same way that he reminds us this very day, that God is forgiveness. God does not simply offer forgiveness. God is forgiveness. And so our task, our challenge is to be that forgiveness, to live that forgiveness and to offer that forgiveness to the world today. Jesus also points out it's very tempting for us to go down the path which is not so helpful, the path that leads to destruction. Those whose sins we retain are retained. Jesus was here to liberate people, to set people free from all the things that separated them from God and from each other. And those same realities are true for us today. We are to live forgiveness. And we do it having been gifted with the power of the Holy Spirit. This gracious and glorious gift which Jesus gave to his first disciples on this day, and he continues to give to us forevermore. How will we live in implementation of Jesus' achievement? How do we do it in this time that is so different to us and so unusual and so challenging? How do we continue 
to live into our sentness, to go into the world and be forgiveness. We do it, firstly, through prayer. We do it through remaining connected with each other through whatever means we have possible. We do it by remembering the great gift and achievement that Jesus made once for all upon the cross and seeking to live that in our lives. We go from here to continue to tell the stories and sing the songs of Jesus and that perhaps is the best way that we can implement that which he has achieved. May God give us his grace, the gift of his spirit, to be that bold in our world and in our circumstances today and every day. The Lord be with you. So let us now together affirm our shared faith. We believe in one God, who made and loves all these. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was born, lived, died and rose again, and is coming to call all to account. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who calls, equips and sends out God's people, and brings all things to their true end. This is our faith, the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the Church. Jesus, wounded and risen, we bring to you our prayers for your broken world. We pray for your people in places of war and unrest in places of ecological disasters, in places of famine and disease. Wounded Creator, we have seen your crucified and risen love. Work your, your resurrection in the lives of your people. We bring our prayers for your divided church. We pray for places where Christian wars against Christian, where your church is split by faction, where ancient hatreds have not been healed by your gospel. Wounded Redeemer, we have seen your crucified and risen love. Work, Work your resurrection, resurrection in the lives of your people. We bring our prayers for our fractured community. We pray for those pierced by nails of prejudice and hatred, of neglect and abuse, of indifference and rejection. Wounded Lover, we have seen your crucified and risen love. Work, Work your, your resurrection, resurrection in the lives of your people. We bring our prayers for all who are hurt. We pray for those whose bodies are in pain or whose minds are confused, those who are friendless or grief-stricken, those without hope for the future. Wounded Healer, we have seen your crucified and risen love. Work, Work your, your resurrection, resurrection in the lives of your people. people. We bring to you our prayers for all who have died. We pray for those who have died in the faith and for those who have never seen or believed. We give thanks for Thomas and for all your saints who have known you as the risen Christ. May we too recognise you in our midst, that with all your saints we may come to the fullness of joy in your presence. Jesus, wounded and risen, we have seen your crucified and risen love. Work your resurrection in the lives of your people. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant the body of us in faith we may by the grace to see through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been offered for us. Therefore, we celebrate the festival. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith with a sincere and a true heart. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. His His Spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. We sing the hymn, Breathe on me, breath of God. Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. And now we give you thanks that you raised him to life triumphant and exalted him in glory. By his victory over death, the reign of sin is ended, a new day has dawned, a broken world is restored, and we are made whole once more. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing.
Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. has taught us we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body. For we all share in the one bread.
most glorious Lord of life, we thank you that you nourish us in these Easter mysteries. Fill us with the spirit of love and unite us in faith, that we may witness to the resurrection and show your glory to all the world. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work for your praise and glory. Well, it's been great to be here with you today on the second Sunday of Easter. We will be back again next Sunday, Sunday the 26th of April at 9am for our Holy Eucharist on the third Sunday of Easter. Thank you for being with us today. It's been great to share in this moment with you. We pray God's blessing. Almighty God, who raised us to newness of life through the waters of baptism, and has brought us out of slavery into everlasting freedom. Give you joy and peace in faith and bring you to your eternal inheritance and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those who you love and pray for this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We sing our final hymn.